Module 1, Segment 4, Additional Functions. The objectives of this training segment are to learn how to work with the online help system, set default clauses, and maintain the system tables. This segment assumes you have already completed Module 1, Segments 1, 2, and 3. We will begin with the online help system. The Quantum Control online help system can be accessed by using the F1 key at the top of your keyboard. This will open the help file to the correct topic for whatever area of the program you are currently in. Here, from the Quantum Control desktop, the help file will open to the Welcome to Quantum Control topic. Throughout this training program, you will be referred to the online help system for more detailed information on topics being addressed. On the left-hand side of the window, you will see a list of chapters for the different functional areas of quantum control. If you click on the plus sign next to the chapter, you will see an expanded list of topics for that chapter. As you click on the topics, you'll see the information for each displayed on the right. When accessing different topics in the help files, you may see green underlined hyperlinks. Click on these to go to related topics and chapters. Searches can be performed using the Search tab. The Print function here will allow you to print out any of the topics. Close the online help window by clicking on the X in the top right corner. Next, we will look at setting default clauses. Clauses are messages you create that can then be printed on forms and documents you generate. Here, these clauses can be set to be applied to all records. We will create a new clause that says, Prior approval required on all returns, and set this clause to print on all invoices. With your mouse, select the User menu in the top left of the Quantum Control desktop. Select Maintain Default Clauses from the menu. The Browsing Default Clauses window opens. This window will display any default clauses you assign. To set a default clause, select the Add Action button. The Default Clause window opens. If you are applying multiple clauses to a single record type, you will set the order in which they print in the Sequence field. Type 1 in the Sequence field. You will notice that in the far right side of the Description field, there is a square-shaped button. You will see these buttons throughout Quantum Control. These buttons signal that this is a table-driven field. Any entries to this field will have to first be built into the table. To access the table in these fields, left-click on the button with your mouse, or navigate your cursor to the table-driven field and use the down arrow key on your keyboard. The Browse Clause Descriptions window opens. This is the master list of all clauses that you will be able to use system-wide. If you haven't yet created any clauses, this window will be empty. To create a new clause, we will select Add. The Adding Clause window opens. The Description field will contain what you see when you are in the Browsing Clauses window. The description will not print when the clause is applied on documents and forms. In the Description field, 
type Invoice Return Clause. The Clause area, type the text that you would like to see printed. In this example, we will type Prior Approval Required on All Returns. When finished, select OK. You will be returned to the Browse Clause Descriptions window, where you should now see your new clause. Double click on the clause to select it. You will be returned to the default clause window. You will see the description of the clause displayed as well as the text. Now you will use your mouse to select where the clause should appear. Click into the checkbox next to the invoice. This clause will now be applied to all invoices. Select OK. You will be returned to the Browsing Default Clauses window, where you will see your assigned clause displayed. Close the Browsing Default Clauses window. There are many table-driven fields in Quantum, in addition to the Clause field. When you first access these tables, they will often contain sample values for you to use, but ultimately, you will want to customize the table entries to reflect the way you do business. You may modify these tables as you encounter them in the program, or from a central point of administration. To access all of the tables at one time, select the User menu in the top left corner of the screen and highlight Maintain System Tables. A sub-menu will open listing the different functional areas of quantum control. As you highlight the different areas, the tables for each area will display. Please refer to the online help for a detailed explanation of table locations and functions. This example, we will make entries into the Inventory Location table. This table is used to record stocking locations. Highlight the Inventory Control Browses functional area. A submenu containing the tables for inventory management opens. Select Location Codes. The Browsing Locations window opens. To create a location code, select Add. The Adding Inventory Location window opens. The Code field will contain the new location. In this example, we will type C1. Description field can be used for a more detailed explanation of the location. In this example, we will use the description field to specify that this code represents aisle C, shelf 1. The sequence field is numeric and can be used for sorting purposes of table entries. Those entries that are used most frequently can be assigned a sequence of 1, next most frequently used, a 2, then a 3, etc. In this example, we will assign a sequence of 1. When finished, select OK. You will be returned to the Browsing Locations window, where you should now see the location you have created. You may now add other locations or close the location table. To recap what we have learned, we have learned how to access the online help system, create default clauses, and maintain the system tables. You may now proceed to Module 2, Segment 1. Creating Inventory Records.